our lead stars of Valerian in the City of a Thousand Planets, Dane DeHaan and Cara Delevingne. Thank you. Hello, you guys. Hi. And if you Hello. guys are capturing this event, you can use the hashtag Valerian to spread the word. Yes. Hashtag Valerian, there you go. Are there movies that you guys grew up with picturing yourselves part of that are similar to this world that you got to step into? Kind of your big blockbuster action-y movies? I mean, I was always very much into fantasy, so growing up watching Disney films, the first movie I kind of saw that was real life that opened me up to sci-fi was Fifth Element. You know, Luke, for me, was the pioneer of, of my favorite sci-fi movies in that genre. Um, I kind of never really, really imagined what it would be like being in them. I just kind of dressed up myself and made my own little world. But that's exactly what Luke did. You know, he was inspired at 10 years old by these incredible comics, and his imagination has brought it to life more than I've ever, more than I could ever expect in a movie, for sure. Uh, I, I think maybe, thank you so much. I think maybe, um, I don't know, the closest thing that I would like pre play pretend to like this was maybe Indiana Jones. You know, I love those movies. And I think the movie, this movie does have kind of like a, it's really just fun, you know, and there is a sense of humor all the way through. And in that way, I feel like it is kind of like those old, old school adventure movies. So what was the first, obviously this is based on a French comic book series. What was the, beyond that series though, what was the first like concept art or your first introduction to, w to the way the movie version would look like for you guys when you were first talking about these roles? I think it was just like a text message from Luke um, that had a picture of one of the aliens, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't even- Alien. I don't remember. I don't e actually. I think I don't even know if the alien he sent. Wasn't it I Igon Cyrus? I feel like I remember seeing the most. He was the most like I feel, the the actual real one is, who's played by John Goodman. Yeah. By the way, which is awesome. I don't know. I think there was so much concept art. I feel there were books and books and all the different environments. It was all drawn and ready, you know, just as we got cast for the film. So us going into this blue screen world, which we spent 90% of our time on, it was kind of so easy to visualize these, these things. You know, we had in our, in our dressing rooms, all of it put up against the wall. You know, everyone's like, it must have been so challenging. But with Luke, it was so easy because his imagination is of a child, even better. You know, you can't even picture what goes on in his head. So if you watch the movie, you'll probably see a little bit of it. But, you know, it was actually just one of the most enjoyable things to kind of let yourself go and be free in this world. How does that blue screen experience compare to your, um, your previous kind of big budget action movies, Amazing Spider-Man and, and um, Suicide Squad? Well, I, I mean, I think this movie has like a thousand times more special effects than Spider-Man. Like for Spider-Man, we were in front of a green screen for I think the last two weeks of filming. Um, in, for Valerian, there was maybe two weeks we weren't in front of a blue screen. So that kind of puts it into perspective. There's just so many more special effects. All of the worlds are completely fully realized and the aliens and everything. Whereas like with Spider-Man, everything's, they try to make it as practical as possible. With this, it's all about creating the worlds and the fantasy of it. Yeah, same with me, I think with Suicide Squad, they didn't know a lot of the special effects, what they were gonna be like until after, which is usually how it's done. Whereas when this movie was finished, Luke, again, spent a year on the film making what was already so planned out. I mean, he really had every single detail meticulously thought out. Is it difficult when you don't know what it's going to look like, or, it, or is it more exciting? It's de I, for me, it's definitely harder, because you don't know if you're playing a role where you're around all this um, visual effects, you don't know how big to go, how to small to, you know, kind of what you're doing, because you don't know what's going to be around you. It's kind of a guessing game. Well, I think that would be a good mo segue into our first clip, so you guys. You can have get a segue. Up. I have a se well. We just you just gave me one. I okay. Mean. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, too visual. Okay. Um, let's check out the first clip, and you guys can get a um, a deeper sense of exactly what the the visuals that we're talking about do look like. Okay, so walk us a little bit through what you're experiencing in this this scene. So are you sitting in the, the bay and what are you looking yeah. at? So one of the only practical sets we had was the spaceship. What, you, what, 
yeah, we so see in that scene. The, yeah, I mean, so we're actually at the spaceship. We're in. They built the entire inside of the spaceship. So the set is probably bigger than at least the fenced off area. Yeah. And it's a giant inside of a spaceship. So we're at the head of it. And then it's just in front of us is a blue screen. And that was the last two weeks. So when we finally got into the spaceship, we were like real things <laughs> everywhere, like picking this up. Like, wow, it was so cool. And, and the the Alex, the voice that is like your the command center for the space, are is the, are you hearing that voice? That was yeah. just Luke in his. No. Yeah. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. It was Luke's assistant. Oh. Uh, it was Luke's assistant, and then and then oh, yeah, you're, no, Luke you're right. liked you're her right. voice so much that he That's used her, her in the movie. No yeah. way. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. He was Sorry, just I had so no idea. Apparently, I wasn't there. <laughs> he was just so used to hearing. Yeah. I do remember Luke, though, do, he would play the other characters a lot and he'd just be shouting from the camera. Yes, <laughs> sure. <laughs> In his French accent, it was amazing. That seems like a Luke Besson thing to do. Um, do you guys have a favorite alien in the movie? My favorite alien? Da. Mine is Da, and I Kari da. just said that because I always say Da. Everyone's too. favorite alien is Da. Yeah. It's so I, cute. You know it's like what this that is. Baby you you want to <laughs> explain? It's this little alien. It's like a ba little baby alien and wears a yellow hat and it has this gun that shoots goo and the only thing it says is da, da. But that's what I want my child to look like, basically. It's da. He's so cute. That is what my child looks like. I know. That's why I said it. <laughs> so we do get about, I guess maybe midway through the movie, a Rihanna burlesque show essentially um so tell me what you do to prepare to meet rihanna for the first time i think we all need some insight into that i'd met her before a long time ago so dane uh, <laughs> what did I don't you know, do man. You just how do like, you prepare to act in i mean that so thing? that was the first two weeks of filming okay and so i knew basically that i was going to paris and the my first two weeks would be set, spent watching rihanna dance in front of me in various outfits <laughs> um and i don't i don't know that i was Jane's prepared. wife is very understanding yeah. <laughs> I don't know that I was prepared, you know, but we did, you know, there was all this confidentiality agreements or whatever on the movie and that I just had to tell people, like, that's what I was going to do. Oh, so that's I, right. you know, told all my friends and whatever and everyone was just really jealous, <laughs> for sure. I mean, it was, it was Wonder why. crazy. <laughs> So you would you would watch Rihanna do? I mean, she'd have to do the number in every costume multiple times, I assume. And you paid witness to. Well, that was all my job, this. man. You know, yeah. like I needed. But it's to, all in a day's my, work. That was my job. Yeah. That was Dane's payment for the movie, basically. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was my salary. Was <laughs> Rihanna burlesque show. <laughs> all right, we have a second clip. Let's um, let's watch Dane. Um, rush through some some worlds of Valerian. It's so fun. And in 3D, it's crazy. I mean, you can tell like all of those scenes in 3D are just yeah. insane. You know. So in a, so in that moment, are you? Is it carefully choreographed so that you know what you're like grabbing at and 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 ducking through, or is it just so finely edited that that? I mean, so honestly, that sequence. The only time it's actually me is when in the beginning, when I say that leads me straight into a wall, and then the part at the very end where it goes by my face. But other than that, it's pretty much, I'm pretty sure, like a 3D body scanned version of me that they've like completely computer generated to do all of that. And they can just like <laughs> move you around at Yeah, they at do their 3D will. scans of our body and then Every they day, like, we get into like motion capture suits and we like run so they know what it looks like when I run and like pretend to do certain things. But it's essentially, uh, it's essentially completely computer generated. So how much of, so in terms of that, where it's, it's so generated, how much of the movie were you unsure what you would look like as a, as a performer? Well, that's the only sequence really that was like that. Because that's just so visual effects heavy. I think it was just easier for them to do my, like, computer generate my body. I think, I don't think I was as much. No, I no. think, I really think that's the only sequence that were, that I'm computer generated completely. The rest of the time it's us. 
basically. Did you did you didn't have a sequence like that where you were? No, yeah. I don't think so. I mean, no, because the bit where I got f pulled up by the butterflies, that was all me. So, no, not at all. So why did I get scanned every day, <laughs> Luke? <laughs> Uh, Dane, I, I spoke with um, with your fearless director a, a couple weeks ago on the phone, and um, he was talking about the, the physical work that you guys did to prepare for the movie, and he told me that you learned sword in in school as a yeah. kid, or swor in college. sword as he pronounced in it. In college, yeah. Cute. So we had I went to an acting conservatory, and it was there was a really intense part of our training program that was all stage combat. And by the time I got out of school, I was certified in unarmed, knife, single sword, and rapier and dagger combat. Stage combat, not real combat. So when we went to do the sword fight, they had scheduled like three months for me to learn the sword fight. And I was like, no, you guys, I know how to fight with swords. Don't worry about it. And they didn't believe me, but it really did. It only took me like three, you know, three hours to learn the swords. And I never thought I was going to get to use that at all. So I'm pretty stoked about it. So your sword skills were directly applicable to, to Valerian. You were just yeah, ready to definitely. I mean, I've used like what I learned in sword fighting class way more than I've ever used what I learned in algebra in my life. You know what I mean? It's a message for kids out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, who's learned it? Who's used anything they've learned in their algebra class? What I'm saying, really? Yeah. Take sword instead. Take this is sword. a message to know. the public education or the education system. But not just single sword, also rapier and dagger, because without that, you know, I wouldn't have known what I was doing. <laughs> Certainly. So how intense are these swords that you that you use to learn? They were his were heavy. Yeah, actually, the swords messed up my wrist. They were too heavy. Were the bendy ones though? Yeah. So I they the were so ones. heavy. And they messed yeah. up my wrist so fast that they ended up just giving me like wooden swords with motion capture things on them. And I think then ended up computer generated. So they're like sword swords, not like javelins or, um, or um, they're like rub, they're like hard rubber. You had a javelin though. I had, oh yeah, at one yeah. point I did have a yeah, javelin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, but I steal that from the Boulon before. <laughs> yes. Luke also said you were a shrimp when he, when you, when he first met you, you had to, I was, oh and then God. I slowly, I I slowly <laughs> became a human we being. We were both prawns. We <laughs> were, what is the word? This thing. No, I think we, I, we were both, we both got in no, the... No, the thing that the whales eat, plankton. Sorry. <laughs> plankton, yeah, we were plankton. We were plankton, and now we're whales. <laughs> we were on whales, and now we're... We, we were both Regal. in the best shape of our life for this movie, for sure. I mean, I would start all my mornings in the gym for two hours a day for every day for nine months. By the I would time be in the gym shouting at him to do more <laughs> press-ups. Yeah. yeah. It worked out. Which one of you worked harder to prepare? I did. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> for sure. I mean, I just, I had already done, uh, I'd just gone, gone from a film where I actually was a lot more muscly um, and a lot bigger, so I actually had to just lose. Which was that? What? Suicide Squad. Oh, oh, right, okay. So I had to kind of... Uh, uh, do you know though when you're in outer space, if you don't work out for at least two hours a day, you die. while you're in outer space, your muscles start to like decrease in mass rapidly. So like astronauts, when they're in outer space, they work out for two hours a day. I guess that makes sense. That's yeah. a good fun fact. I felt like a racehorse when we were doing this film. It's like we were just so, the food that we were eating and the things we were doing constantly, just kind of moving. Yeah. I felt like the most time we sat down was when we were in between shots, basically. Yeah, and it wasn't even so much about like bulking up or anything. It was just about looking fit. And you know, like they ne Valerian and Lauren Lee never get tired. So I think that's kind of that was the goal. It's like never get tired, you know, endurance. The same amount of prep that you guys put in for Tulip Fever, I'm I'm sure. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> A different kind of prep. Yeah. Different, different, different prep. I mean, I worked out for Tulip Fever. You know, I was naked in that movie. So. <laughs> yeah, he was very naked. More naked. Oh. oh. I haven't seen it yet. Never mind. Tulip Fever is coming out in. Um, next month? Yeah, September? That's soon. What it's they coming say. out soon. Yeah, they yeah. That. that's oh, what they, so say. they say. Rumored. Yeah. So they say. I am curious, though, um, you know, when you are um, choosing roles, how conscientious are you guys to the life that they take on after um, the movie has entered the world? Are you guys, um, like, curious about box office numbers and do you use that to inform um, the size and scale of the movies that you choose to, to take, the projects that you take going forward? To me, 
Well, you spend, well, with Valerian especially, you spend six months making the film. The afterlife of the film, of course, you want people to enjoy it, you know, you want people to, you know. But again, for us as actors, we don't have much control of what happens to the film. I think with this movie, it's been the closest to what the script was, what was planned out to be, what's in it. But once you're done, you kind of hand it over and that's it. Um, to me, the most important bit really is the, you know, the learning, what you learn, how you grow, the experience of it what you kind of take away as an actor. Who cares about box office numbers, right? <laughs> Someone does. Yeah, I mean, look, I do it because I love acting. You know, like, that's why I've always done it. And uh, I like to do all different kinds of things. So the more different something is, the more into it I am. And I had never made a movie like this or played a part like this. So obviously, you know, you want the world to embrace it. Uh, I'm passionate about everything I do, but... Um, and it's kind of a bummer when that doesn't happen, but um, but the reason I do it is is for the experience of making it. You know, like my job was kind of felt like it was done like a year ago, and those six months in Paris like were the time of my life. You know, it was the most fun I've ever had making a movie. And so you just hope like when people watch it, they have the time of their life watching it. You know, Cara, you released a single today. I did. In conjunction with the movie. I did, yeah. That's exciting. It is. It's How exciting. did was that something that you were approached with or uh, did, did you seek that out? Um, well, obviously doing this movie, we got to know each other very well. Luke knew I was doing music at the time. He listened to it. He said that he would possibly like one of the songs in the film. Um, but I recorded that song about three years ago. Um, so it was quite funny because I wanted to kind of re-record it with my voice now because it's obviously changed a little bit. Um, but it was done. He just said to put it in. We shot a music video for it, which will be coming out soon as well. But yeah, it's it's really crazy. Did Luke direct <laughs> the music video? Yes. Wow. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Weirdest thing ever. You're a, a full-on pop weird. star now. I know. I did a song with Pharrell and Luke. Song, shot my music video, and it's out at the same time. I mean, come on, yeah. bro, my brain's out right now. A movie with Rihanna. Like it just keeps going. <laughs> okay, let's cry. <laughs> Dane, if you were to, um, you know, Cara is now a, a multi-hyphenate, a singer, a, a model, an actress. A, you know, what's what's the if you were to add a, you know, actor. Don't forget his sword. I'm a oh, model. A sword fighter. It's a model. I'm a model. model. He's a model. model. He taught me things. <laughs> we talk about modeling. I'm a, a very like singularly focused person. You know, I can't do more than one thing at a time. I never have been able to. Like, I can't even. I don't know, it's really distracting being here because there's all these people doing different things and I'm just trying really hard to look here and talk to you. So um, I, don't, I don't think I, you know, I have modeled. I've been a model. Yeah, but, uh, have you but seen? I'm, you know, so I'm, a, I'm an actor. Like, I don't, I don't even really like, you know. Uh, he doesn't like texting and talking at the same time. I can't text and talk. Who can? I, I mean. Yeah. I try to, as you can tell. That's fun. Um, Start saying what you're texting. And, yes. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> But even like directing, like I don't really have aspirations to direct or anything like that. So no, no burgeoning pop career. No. <laughs> he's ca he's a really good singer though. Yeah. I can sing, but I wouldn't write a song. I wouldn't take the time to do it. There's no way that well, would ever happen. Valerian too. Someone he had a have baby to at the same time as living. I, I would yeah, do fa actor father. That's he sufficient. He breathes and talks. That is and model. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. All right. Model. He's really fixated on the well, model guys, thing. I'm a model. Actor father model. Well, everyone we always it. talks about how Car is a model, and like I'm a model too. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, guys. Um, Sexism right there. Um, yeah, no, but I, uh, yeah, I don't know what I was going to say. Modeling. Yeah. yeah. I'm right. a model, basically. It's model, actor, not even actor, model, model, actor. Sure, yeah. sure. First, yeah. But then father. Yeah. <laughs> when you have time on the side. Don't forget. Yeah. You need another paycheck. Um, okay, audience, we're going to toss it to you guys and see what you have for Kara and Dane. Um, my question is, is like when you guys are like, especially a movie like this, it's very like, it's very animated. Um, when you guys are in front of the blue screen or the green screen for the majority of production, how do you, besides being great actors, how do you stay in the character and kind of stay in that world when you're just kind of surrounded by green or just one color? So um, again, like we said, I think for this film, for the six months that we were doing it, just to every day be living in these characters, you know, kind of keeping that consistency, um, especially for these characters, they were constantly delivering, constantly on point, ready to go at, at the drop of a hat. So I think for us, we were both just kind of playing in that the whole time. Um, 
you know, I really feel like after those six months, I really took away something from my character in terms of just having a kind of normal life in terms of every day, having the same job, going to the same place, doing the same things, eating at the same times. It felt amazing. <laughs> it was really cool. Hi, Dane. How are you? You're my favorite actor, and I love everything that you do. Me too. Thanks. Um, I love you too. Um, I, 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 wanted, I, I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to ask you, what was the difference on working on this film compared to the many different projects you've done in the past? Well, it was, it was completely different. You know, I think in this one, you're in front of a blue screen almost every single day, so you're using your imagination almost all the time. So, um, you know, it's hard to really be you need to tap into that and you need to, it's almost a childlike thing, you know, you're like going to work, you're putting on a superhero suit and you're playing pretend. And, um, and that was it. In a way, like I think the challenge was not, was allowing myself to have fun with it and not taking it too seriously because it really is just so fun. So it was about allowing myself to maybe enjoy it and have a more fun filled time than I normally do in the work. What was your inspiration for like making the character on the movie? How, what, what was your inspiration there? Thank you. I mean, for me, obviously, you know, we had the comic book to work off of. These characters have been around for a really long time. I think Luke was the biggest um, fountain of knowledge. He's known, he knows everything about these characters. You know, the first guy he had a crush on was Laureline. So he was the kind of first person to go to. Um, I think when you're making a character, especially like this, it's just kind of trying to find the honesty of the character, especially if it comes from a comic book. I know Luke definitely wanted me to look at a, a, a few films like Alien, you know, Sigourney Weaver, you know, those kind of strong um, female roles, but to kind of make it my own in a way. I think when I'm thinking of strength in a woman, I can think of every woman I've ever met to kind of be inspired by. I was wondering about the, the costumes, how comfortable were the suits and did they actually light up? Uh, like they do in the screen? They did actually light up, yes, um, which was cool. Um, and they were pretty comfortable. We had a lot of fittings uh, with them and with the costume people where we could run around and move, and if anything pinched or pulled or whatever, they would make the adjustment to make them more comfortable. Um, they even had like a cooling system in them, so if we got... Oh, uh, you didn't? I did. So if we like got... Dave was sitting there hot, plugged you could, in you could to plug a thing. yourself into an ice cold ice And I was like, Dave, what are you doing? He was sitting there like so happy with a little bit of sweat. And I was like, yeah, what's going on right now? Yeah, because it had these tubes. He was like, you don't even know. It would fill with cold water yeah. to like cool your core. So if there was a day that was super physical in the suits and I was like sweating a lot, I wouldn't overheat. It was pretty sweet. He had a little pee zip as well, which I did not have. So that was a little bit annoying. It took a lot longer to pee. I did. It's yeah, that, don't know why you need to know that. I slept in my suit a lot. They were that comfortable, so that was cool. So I was just wondering, like, how do you guys get into the mindset to be not on Earth, but like in this totally like out of world, like inner space gal galaxy where you're talking to aliens and things like that instead of just like being an everyday person? I can kind of, when you think about it, you can kind of relate it to real life because it's like, this feels like it could be another planet. Like, what are we doing here? I'm talking to aliens right now. Like, you know, you can just relate it to real life. We're aliens, we're sitting here. This is space, when you travel on a plane, it's like you're in a spaceship. I don't know, it's, it's, you can kind of just relate it, especially if you have a, an imagination. It's quite fun to just play with, I guess. What about you, Dan? I mean, definitely, I would show up early every day and I would go to the gym for a couple hours and that was just kind of how I got into like the Valerian mindset, you know, just starting my day with something physical because, you know, we are like soldiers, space agents, whatever you want to call it, but we are, it, it helped pump me up for the day, you know what I mean? And then it just became about using your imagination in terms of the aliens and stuff. I also used meditation actually quite a lot, but just that was more to, especially meditating in front of all the pictures, being able to kind of just get, get out of your head and into your body, and then you're kind of prepared to do anything. But everyone should do that every day. Anyway, sorry. Don't worry. Uh, my name is David, I'm from Ecuador, and I have a question for both of you. Um, do you actually get nervous to see the final product of the movie? Because you say that it, most of the work was done afterwards. So do you get nervous or what do you expect to see? I mean, the first time you saw the movie, what do you thought? Yeah, I mean, yeah, sure, I get nervous because you don't know what it's going to be, you don't know what it's going to look like, you have no idea, but it's, um, you know, it was mind-blowing the first time I saw it. I think 
you use your imagination as much as you can filming it, but I feel like my imagination only goes so far and Luke Vassan's goes so much further, you know? And it's, this movie's exciting because it's almost as if technology has caught up to Luke's imagination. And um, so the first time I saw it, I was just, I, I, the first thing I said after I saw it was that I have to watch it again because I was just kind of so like taken aback and my mind was so blown and not just from all the visual visuals but the fact that like I was in it and like uh, that's the movie we made and you know it was really um disorienting in like the best way possible um I was just wondering what was the most exciting part of filming like the most even action-packed or like what was your favorite part during filming um I mean so hard to pick it is. one moment. The first time we walked on the our spaceship was really cool. Yeah. You know, because we had spent so much time in front of blue screens, and before we shot, Luke took us onto the set and was kind of turned the lights on. Was like, this is your spaceship, and to actually be in a real space and for it to be like our ship, and I don't know, there was just something really, really cool about that moment where it just all seemed a little more real than it did the rest of the time. Yeah, I think maybe for me, I'll go with the first day. The first day I shot was when we were on the school bus coming into the big market. I was terrified. I was so nervous. There were so many people on set. But that was kind of, the bus was real. Um, but it was just really nice because I had Dane next to me and he was keeping me calm and because he's very calm and I'm not. So that was really nice. Um, but it was really great. And that moment, meeting the actors for the first time and kind of just realizing what was actually happening. Like, am I in a loop and what film is this really going on? Ah, trying to contain that energy and excitedness, probably. How do you guys deal with the day-to-day, -day, and this is for both of you, um, being a high-profile person and people wanting to be around you or meet you? Yeah, I don't know, man. I just, like, don't worry about it that much, maybe. Um, that helps. Yeah. Um, act like it isn't happening. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Completely just live in denial, denial about the whole thing. No, I don't know. I just go about my life. I mean, I feel like, I honestly feel like you have to deal with it a lot more than I do, but like, I, you know, I, 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 um, yeah, I like go to the grocery store and I have to give like five high fives. It's not like so bad, you know what I'm saying? That's like, pretty Like it feels chill, pretty good. Right? Hey, what's up? Yeah, yeah, I love you too. Okay, I'm going home now. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're pretty blessed, so it's not, yeah, the, the, there's small things that happen, but again, every, everyone has things to deal with, but that I don't think that's the worst thing. <laughs> Cara, Dane, thank you so much for your time. You. Congratulations you so on Valerian and the <laughs> City of a Thousand Planets, open thank in you. theaters now. Oh my yeah. God. If you guys see it, I hope you enjoy it. Let us know what you think. Yeah.